is practicing social distancing and new pathways of working, we at Cumetri too have fully embraced our responsibility to keep our workplace safer and healthier. This means the majority of us are now working from home. But the show must go on, right? So here I am, Rupal, the product specialist at Cumetri with a new episode of Cumetri Quality Boards, even though from my own home. This session will highlight what is e-signature and how does e-signature work in Cumetri. Cumetri offers approval workflow and auditing reports with e-signature to produce evidences that can be used for SOW and other audit compliance. The e-signature feature helps organizations to regulate the approval workflow of test cases and test executions. Test case executions can now be approved using an e-signature that verifies that the test execution was documented correctly and authenticates the test execution status assigned to the test case. So, to give you all the brief about the solution, starting with user stories, the requirement management module is not affected by e-signature feature, which means that business analysts writing the user story will continue with their task without waiting for the approval. They can keep on creating and updating the stories in Jira, which will get synced in Cumetri real time and into its requirement management module. However, as a part of e-signature and dual authentication compliance, all the test cases will go in the approval cycle before they can be linked with the test suites for capturing the execution. Same is the case with created test suites. The test suites need to be approved before the testers can perform the execution. And once the test suite is approved, the tester can then log the execution. How does e-signature work? To help QA teams align all their efforts to construct quality test cases, Cumetri empowers the management to keep a check on the changes to a test case and how it can be integrated into test executions. Let's understand the step one, that is, deciding the project for e-signature. First, companies must review and select all the projects for which they want to enable e-signature functionality. It's possible that there are few projects that are stipulated under the compliance and governance norms which makes it imperative to enable the e-signature. However, there could be another team working on a project that doesn't require this role mechanism. So if you see here, the compliance with e-signature project in my project list is the one where I would want to go ahead and enable e-signature. So I have enable e-signature feature for this particular project. So the project admin will enable e-signature feature for the needed project. And after this, the admin can then enable part 11 compliance flag from here. So in this project, I have enabled e-signature and part 11 compliance as well. Moving on to step two, that is adding approvers. Once you have project that has e-signature enabled, Along with the part 11, project admin must add users who will be the approvers. There are two kinds of approvers, test case approvers and test suite approvers. So you can add test case approvers from here. Test case approvers, they will have rights to approve test cases that are authored. Test suite approvers, they will have rights to approve created test suites and also approve executions captured for these test suites. Here, I will add Kim and Brad as test case approvers. So I can look up for the users Kim and Brad and add them as my test case approvers. Now I will add Kim and Brad again for test suite approvers as well. So if you see here, they've been added as the approvers. We will now move to step three, which is test case authoring. Testers will start authoring a test case. And once they are submitted, these test cases will be sent to approval for the, sorry. Testers will start authoring test cases. And once they are submitted, these will be sent to the approver for the approval. Currently, 
I am on the test authoring screen and as you see here I have created a new test case and entering all the relevant parameters for my test case. As soon as I hit on the create button, you would see here the one my test case has been flagged as orange, which means it is yet to be approved. The test case is marked in green are the ones that have already been approved by the approver. What is the logged in phase? The test case that has been submitted for approval and has not been approved enters the logged in phase, meaning testers cannot link such unapproved test cases with test suite and hence they cannot be executed. However, they can keep on editing these test cases until they are approved by the designated approver. Approval workflow. Approvers will be able to view these test cases and approve them. To comply with dual authentication, Qemetry will ask the approver to re-authenticate by entering their login credentials for approving. So I'll go ahead and enter the credentials. Once correct credentials are entered, this case will be approved and can no longer be edited. If someone needs to edit these test cases, they will have to be create another version of the test case. So if you see here, I can no longer have in-field editing. So to uh, edit these test case, I'll have to create an entirely new version, which will then again invite the approver to review and approve a particular test case version. Moving on to step four, which is test suite and test executions. Testers will create test suite and link approved test cases for their execution. So I'm going to go ahead and create a test suite. We're okay, entering all the relevant details and tag a test suite to a release and cycle. Link platforms. Platforms are test environments against which you would want to test your or record your test uh, execution. Now I can scope in all the test assets, maybe requirement or test cases to this particular test suite. So I'm creating a test suite. I added the platforms against which I want to record the execution. Import iPhone data to iTunes is the test case that we just created, which got approved. And because it got approved, I can now add it to my execution scope. So as soon as I hit the create button, you would see here that the test suite has been created. And on the test suite screen, you would see that the created test suite now enters the logged in phase until they are approved by the designated approver. So unless the test suite hasn't been approved, the test cases cannot be executed. Again, if you have the dual authentication enabled, you would need to electronically uh, authenticate or provide your credentials to approve your test suite. On the other hand, to approve these test suites, the approver uh, has to go ahead for each of these and go ahead and provide, sorry, I'll start again. On the other hand, to approve these test cases, the approver will have to enter their credentials to comply with dual authentication for each of the execution iteration. And once the test suite is approved, only then the testers can execute the test cases and log the test results as you see here. And these execution results will again go in the logged in phase until they are approved. To complete the whole cycle, a test suite approver will have to close the test suite. This will be considered as the final approval in the testing workflow. Okay, so I will just go ahead and close the entire test suite as the final approval for my testing workflow. And again, if I have dual authentication turned on, I will have to provide the credentials to complete the approval.
The most important and the final step in the e-signature or the approval workflow is the approval workflow report. Humetry offers the approval workflow report that summarizes details on test case approval and test execution approval based on project, release, and cycle. QA managers and project auditors use these reports for audit reasons wherein they can find out which test cases, test feeds, and executions are in review, which are in approved state. In addition, this, pro this report also provides details of the approval workflow, which includes test case details, approved test case version, who approved this test case, when was it approved, etc. Uh, the most important part of any ap application is to understand the benefits and hence we now focus on benefits of e-signature with Qmetry. E-signature with Qmetry offers re-authentication to comply with dual authentication. It certainly offers reduced risk and hence quicker implementation due to automated compliance workflows. It offers uh, ability to save time by avoiding manual intervention in the approval process. Real-time access of all the testing records and artifacts at any time with increased efficiency leading to improved productivity of testers and hence cost-effective solution as Qmetry compliance supported features eliminate paper paperwork and cumbersome regulatory processes. I hope you like this session on e-signature and found this insightful. If you have any query, feel free to reach us at info at the rate or sign up for a free trial of Qmetry from our website. Thank you.